So this talk is on purgatory and the first thing we will consider is the existence of purgatory. The word purgatory is not found in scripture and so some have made the claim that the doctrine of purgatory was made up. Because the word purgatory is not found in scripture it doesn't mean that it was not an integral part of Catholic faith from the very beginning, from the time of Christ himself. The word Trinity is actually also not found in Scripture, and yet no one doubts that it is a Catholic teaching that dates to the very foundation of the Church. And if one considers the evidence, it becomes clear very quickly that purgatory is a reality. So if you look at the sacred Scripture, we find that in the second book of Maccabees, we find this reference in chapter 12 of the second book of the usefulness of praying for the dead, that it is a good and wholesome thought to offer prayers for the dead. In the New Testament, in his first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 3, St. Paul explains what happens to those who are righteous and yet are not perfect when they die. And he says that such a one will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. The reality of purgatory is referred to in early Christian documents, and as early as the second century, we find some documents referring to the practice of praying for the dead. Presumably, it's useless to pray for the saints because, well, they're there, they've made it. There's no point praying for them, they're already saved. And in the apocryphal Acts of Paul and Thecla, we find this reference to the practice of praying for the dead. And when we say apocryphal, it doesn't mean that it was necessarily false or made up or it's lies. Apocryphal just means that it wasn't considered or included in the canon of scripture. It still gives testimony to this concept existing in the Christian community in the second century. Tertullian, another very early father of the church, attests to the early practice of Christians praying for the dead. And if we consider some of the very famous Eastern fathers of the church, you have Saint Cyril of Jerusalem, who in describing the Mass refers to the fact that prayers for the dead occurred after the consecration. And also Saint John Chrysostom, the great Eastern father of the church, and he refers to the fact that almsgiving can be very helpful for the dead. And again, the assumption, of course, is that this means that there are some who are dead who are in a state of need. And this pretty much is starting to define the idea of purgatory. St. Augustine, in his book, The City of God, is very clear on, on his ideas regarding purgatory. And he teaches that temporal punishments are suffered by some in this life, but by others in the next. And if we think about the doctrine of purgatory, it glorifies the justice of God. One of the complaints made against the Catholic Church is that you just go to confession, that's your ticket out of anything. You just commit any crime you want, go to confession, bang, you walk out, and it's all good. It's too easy. It's not fair. It's not just. And the doctrine of purgatory reminds us that God indeed is just. That if a person was to commit horrendous crimes, go to confession and they were truly sorry, God would forgive them. But that doesn't mean that the temporal punishment owing is gone. It still has to be paid. And so if someone committed horrendous crimes, went to confession, was forgiven by God, and then died, the temporal punishment which is owing for those sins needs to be paid and this would happen in purgatory. And so we can be sure of the fact that at the general judgment, when everyone sees the justice of God on display, no one will be complaining that God was unfair. No one will complain that God was unjust. St. Augustine, he says that suffrages do not help all the dead, but only those who have lived in such a way as to benefit them after this life. So we have this clear distinction between the damned and for them, prayers for the dead, useless. We have the saved, 
and prayers for them are pretty useless as well because well they're perfect already they're saved there's no need to pray for them but there's another category of soul after death who is not yet fully perfected but needs to be purified and these are the ones that we can assist with our prayers and these are the ones which we refer to as existing in the state of purgatory and saint monica the mother of saint augustine she asked her son in the fourth century to remember her soul in his masses after she died in the church's uh, more official magisterium we find that in the second general council of leon in 1274 and in the council of florence in 1439 uh, the usefulness of praying for the dead is referred to and after this time the word purgatory becomes more and more common and until it becomes common parlance so what is the nature of purgatory well purgatory is a place of purgation it's a place of suffering and we can't presume that we understand it all perfectly because well we're not there and apart from what we have revealed to us and what reason can deduce from what is revealed to us then the exact nature and the state of those things remain somewhat a mystery you have private revelations that give away details and so forth but they are after all private revelations what is clear though is it's a place of purgation so it's uncomfortable it's a place of suffering it's a place of suffering and yet it's not hell and the reason it's not hell is because of its purpose the purpose of purgatory is to purify souls before their entry into heaven in the book of the apocalypse we read that nothing unclean can enter into heaven this state of purgation is a state of cleansing for that reason the souls in purgatory are willing and happy to be there and this should not be a difficult concept to understand despite the fact they're suffering they're very willing and they're very happy to be there and in, we see this in fact in the modern world all the time where people will pay money a lot of money to undergo very painful procedures for the sake of a greater good for the sake of say their beauty they'll undergo horrible procedures if we use that as an analogy the souls of purgatory are happily and willingly undergoing this state of purgation in preparation for their union with almighty god in heaven with their union with the blessed virgin mary with their union with the angels and saints no one wants to enter heaven uh, filthy or looking dirty god won't allow it but no one would want to do it and so the souls in purgatory are willingly there they're happy there and they're also willing and happy because they know it's temporal it's all ordered towards that final union with god in heaven so it passes just some final considerations on our relationship with the souls in purgatory the most obvious thing firstly is that we have to offer prayers for the dead it's intertwined with almost everything we do and every day if we say our prayers at all we will be saying prayers for the dead we remember the dead in almost every every prayer that we say and it is a good thing for us to do this we have this intimate connection with the holy souls and our prayers our sacrifices our almsgiving our good deeds all of these things can be offered with our intention for the benefit of the holy souls in purgatory now it's the more common opinion of theologians that the saints can also intercede for the holy souls in purgatory the saints who have reached heaven they can offer their prayers and intercession to assist their brethren and the holy souls in purgatory and it's a probable opinion and acceptable to believe that the holy souls themselves can assist us founded on the fact that we all are bonded through the virtue of charity many cases can be given where the holy souls have been invoked and prayers have been answered leo the 13th himself ratified a prayer asking for the assistance of the holy souls he did that in 1889 and the church although she has not encouraged the practice in the same way that she does our praying for the holy souls uh, she certainly has not frowned on it 
or forbidden it. There's just some considerations on the Catholic doctrine of purgatory, its existence, also its nature, and finally, our relationship with the holy souls. So let us reinvigorate our prayers for the holy souls, assist them by our prayers and our good actions, remembering that we too may find ourselves very soon in purgatory, and that when we are in purgatory, we may also find ourselves helped by the saints in heaven, some of them perhaps the very souls that we prayed for during our lives on earth.